internet. Welcome to Steph Theory, oh, where God, we figure out how to rebuild this engine. Well, not rebuild, do work on this engine because I have no clue. John has no clue. The camera totally pointed in a different direction. We're just we're just working things out. So it's been a little while since we did any work on the car, but not too long. Only, you know, a few days or so. You know, and um, it's. Totally not because I am scared to shit as to how we're gonna tackle this. Absolutely not. This is this is easy. This is so easy. So first things first, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm gonna remove the spark plugs. Today's goal is to replace the head gasket along with cleaning and replacing every other seal from the head up. So to begin this, all four spark plugs will need to be removed. The little notches on the cam gears are indicators for top dead center. You definitely want to line these up as to avoid damaging your motor. Thankfully, the 4A platform is a non-interference engine, so I wasn't nervous about messing that up. I'm going to check the engine, but we need something down here. Another way to check TDC is to put something like a screwdriver into the plug hole and rotate the crank until it hits its highest point. So I've noticed that sometimes when the car's on boost, there's this really weird scraping, screeching noise, and I've tried to explain it to people on forums, and they keep saying, oh, that's just the sound the supercharger makes. It might, it might be that. It's like gouged out the surface, like you could feel. Yeah, that's probably it, yeah. it's rubbing and like somewhere. It stops and just sort of comes on. So that must be something there isn't quite lining up, but that's interesting, so. Rubbing in the block. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Ooh. There you go. This is not how you do it. <laughs> or this is how you do it. No, this is definitely not how you do it. This is not recommended in any way. There we go. Pull your bracket. Whee! The lower timing belt cover was strangely a little difficult to remove. <laughs> Look how wonky that is. We need to change that thread, I think. It's like my me after a night out. <laughs> Another one. Oh, Another there's one. not a notch. Oh, okay. Alright. Fine. Is this recording? Yeah. Yeah. He's just showing me what it is. Oh my god, it's about... Oh, it's a... The cam covers were next, and I'm not sure if you can see, but all the tops were popped out. Not because of anything we did, of course. It was John's fault. Oh. Yeah, this is the worst one. Look at it! Look at Crust. the thick oh. shit in there. It's gross. Oh, it's so short. Yeah. Oh, it's stuck. It's so short. They got the nice. Well, uh, heat paint thing, and those all label them left and right. I don't know if they all are, so. Left. Lefty Lucy. Right, left Lucy, right Lucy. Okay. Right. It doesn't look like an R, but you know. <laughs> the engine mount bracket needed to be removed so that the timing cover could come out. This was held on by three bolts. And then we got the markings there and there. For stuff that I don't quite understand, but you know. Next task was to crack loose all the bolts holding in the cam caps. These are all 10 mil with a few nuts that you'd need an extended socket piece for to get past the threaded studs. I didn't do these in order as I wasn't sure if the tension would damage anything underneath. Well, well, look, like this, car's, this car oh leaks. God, this yeah. car thinks about it and it goes, nah, I'm just going to spill shit everywhere. Yeah. So, now, what do you think you're going to do after this when you reload your whole engine, you put everything back together and you don't want to leak a car? Do you want to uh, I'm going to case-wop it so it leaks. No, I'm just going to smell it. Because that leaks. It does. Yeah, facts. <laughs> but how would you have an old motor that doesn't leak? That would just be... And then... Because that leaks. And then... Well, that might be a little leak too. The bearing cat took a little gentle persuasion with one of the local swing presses to come loose. Oh yeah, these are wrong. Oh, it's like... No, I was making sure it doesn't sound scary. That's a funny looking, it's like... Like a lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what I mean, mm. there's like a groove, put the oil away, mm. and then it sits in this groove. I'm gonna watch them. Oh, you misaligned it and then just tried to hit it. Alright, that's right. Oh. And then what? Apparently, it's supposed to be. Come on, focus. Soft and fiber. It's supposed to be soft, and it's like. Yeah. Not soft. No. <laughs> be sure to keep these in order after removal. They should be labelled. 
even if it takes you a good chunk of time scraping the gunk away to be able to see what is labeled, they are only supposed to go in a certain order, so make sure you get it right. The head bolts were pretty easy to get to, and they were also undone out of order, just to be sure nothing was going to get more load over the rest. Though in hindsight, that wouldn't have really happened to these, would they? Uh -huh. oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> also, do you like the sticker? I made it it. After the head was removed, it was time to scrape off all the gunk and remove that old head gasket. Cleaning montage! We may have mistook the head gasket as part of the block, and I may have been cleaning the surface for about 10 minutes prior. In terms of equipment, all I used was a blunt blade, heavy dose of degreaser, and what wasn't pictured was a vacuum cleaner, which I used to suck out all the leftover gasket that fell into the cylinders. The, the thread? Yeah. I'm lubing the thread with engine oil so that when they're torqued down, the load will be evenly spread throughout the vault. <laughs> Me, I dropped it again. Pounds across them is kind of toying over them. Probably a bit late to say, but when you do remove the head bolts, keep in mind that the exhaust side has longer bolts than the intake side. I didn't notice this at first and spent way more time than I care to admit trying to figure out why the bolts wouldn't screw all the way in. There's a step you're ordering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're gonna remember that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nearly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, three four, four, five, four, five, six, six seven, seven, nine, eight, eight, ten. eight nine, nine, ten. Yes. I'm gonna forget that. One, 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 four, two, three, three seven, ten, nine, eight. No. The torque wrench is sent to twenty nine newton meters. From there, we'll need to mark some kind of identifier on the bolts and then tighten each of them 90 degrees, then a further 90 degrees again to correctly tighten them to spec. The head studs on a foray motor can be used up to four times, and we're guessing this motor hadn't had its gasket replaced before, so the bolts will be reused in this instance. Yeah, you're not supposed to be that three. Yeah, three. There you go. Hey! Torqued. Oh, my house. <laughs> so tired. So <laughs> This one we put on. And then you want all the same places. Oil about it. Everywhere. At least it doesn't even matter if you spill oil on any No, it just goes straight in the pan. It's an engine. It's like, yeah, well, fuck yeah. Feed me. The process to reassemble is more or less backwards. Lubricate everything generous before reinstalling all of the components. The camshafts should feel snug and almost slip into the correct position. If you're unsure, just twist them around until they feel like they fall in place. With the cam caps, make sure you reinstall these both in order and facing the right direction. Again, this will be labeled on each cap, so you may need to give them a good scrub to be able to read them correctly. I started the threads by hand, making sure everything was finger tight first, before going about and tightening these down. With this, I tighten them a few turns at a time as to not warp or put any unnecessary strain on the camshafts. The little cam seals were irritating to say the least. You just gotta take your time trying to press these in. In an ideal world, you'll have a socket large enough to fit and use that to press the seal in, However, that wasn't the case for us. We spent a lot of time trying to tap it in with a small extension and a hammer. Finally, these were torqued down to 12 Newton meters. A lot of torque for a little bulb. And because they're so long, there isn't like... Let the blind man have some fun. <laughs> and finally, finally, all we had to do left was to reinstall the cam covers and for extra measure, we also decided to reinstall the cam gears just so we could rotate the entire system around and just see if there was any resistance, which there wasn't in our case, so yay.
And with that done, I think we finally cracked 10 minutes on a build video, which is exciting as heck. Um, I'm not sure what the next installment will be. However, it will most likely be another engine related clip. So please do let me know what you guys think of this project so far. And if you have any comments or criticisms, I'd honestly love to hear them. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.